It's been postponed several times. There have been leaks and other problems, and now another problem. We don't know how major with this test this morning at the Cape. Uh, the test scheduled to get the shuttle program back on the road toward a launch sometime this fall. What the complications or implications of, of this failure this morning will mean for that launch, we will find out later. In other news... But with these problems, it becomes less and less likely that it will happen and there could be a delay as late as October. Paula? Thank you, Bettina. Bettina Gregory reporting live from Cape Canaveral this morning. A space shuttle engine test has failed five seconds to ignition and we'll get a late trouble report. This is Daybreak, Thursday, August 4th, with Brian Nelson and Molly McCoy from CNN Center in Atlanta and Reed Collins in Washington. Good morning. A planned test firing of the space shuttle Discovery's main engines was halted half an hour ago, just some five seconds before ignition. NASA engineers are troubleshooting now to determine what the computer sensed that caused the shutdown that close to firing. CNN's John Zarella is live at the Kennedy Space Center now. And John, what do we know? Well, Reed, at this point, we really don't know what exactly has happened. It'll take engineers a while to figure that out. There are going to be some meetings right now. They're in meetings to figure it out, try and find out how long it will now take to get back into a, a test mode again. It may be as long as at least another 48 hours. That's a minimum. Uh, it was billed as the, the biggest test on the ground that the shuttle would go through before the launch, which was hoped for in late September. At this point, we have no idea whether there will be any delays in a, September, in a late September launch because of this. Everything had gone smoothly through the tanking operation last night, right up until the point of the countdown. 11, 10, we have a go for main engine start. 7, we have, uh, we have, we have a cutoff. We have cutoff of the, uh, of the start sequence. We are in the process of safing. At this point, uh, we are in the process of safing of the uh, the main propulsion system out on the pad. Uh, we have a go for the auxiliary power unit uh, shutdown. Uh, we have moved the orbiter access arm back into position uh, at the orbiter. Uh, this is not necessary at this point, uh, but uh, if this were a launch sequence with the crew on board, this would be the procedure. At this point... Uh, at this point, I have with me Jim Ball, NASA spokesman. And uh, Jim, what exactly if do we know to this point happened? Well, basically what we know happened was that we had an automatic shutdown of the shuttle main engines that was caused by some sort of flagging of a problem by an engine controller uh, to the shuttle's main computers. And it's a very automated sequence that occurs and it's intended basically to make sure that things do not proceed on uh, when the system senses a problem and the machine's not ready to continue. So basically we had a situation where one of the engines wasn't ready to fire. Uh, we had started into the engine start sequence and just how far we got into that is not clear at this time, nor is it clear what type of problem it was that prompted the engine's computer to report to the orbiter's computers, uh, you better stop, we're not ready to go. Where do we go from here? We try again, and we're in the process now of draining the propellants from the external tank. As you mentioned, it looks uh, like 48 hours appears to be a minimum, uh, but we really won't know until engineers have a chance to assess the problem. I would say that getting as close as we did to the T0 time, uh, we accomplished a lot with the test. Uh, but obviously we did not complete the, the engine firing, which is the major portion of verifying the system. Thank you, Jim. We will keep you updated as information is available and let you know as soon as we do when this test firing will again be scheduled for. This is John Zarella reporting live from the Kennedy Space Center. Well, try, try again. A crucial test firing of the Space Shuttle Discovery's engines has been tentatively rescheduled for Sunday after suffering yet another setback this morning. We have a cutoff. We have cutoff of the, uh, of the start sequence. NASA computers aborted the firing just a fraction of a second before the engines were to have been ignited. This latest in a string of problems appears to have been caused by the malfunction of an engine valve. Officials say it is not clear if the valve actually failed to close or whether a sensor malfunctioned. NASA technicians feel they can resolve the problem within three days and give frustrated workers a much-needed break.
We feel like with a 72-hour scrub turnaround, the way the work is phased, people can all get at least one day off in the meantime, a full 24-hour day, and we feel like that, that's probably sufficient to refresh them and get them back up to speed and ready to go again on Sunday, on Monday, on Monday, Monday Saturday night. Discovery Flight Commander Frederick Houck admits he is disappointed by the setback, but says he's impressed by the launch team's handling of the situation. This is the CBS Evening News, Dan Rattle reporting. Good evening. Another setback for the space shuttle. Today's important test firing of Shuttle Discovery's main engines never came off. Last minute glitch in a fuel valve. Correspondent Bruce Hall reports on this latest delay in getting the space shuttle flying again. Computers. A small sluggish seconds. valve that took a few extra milliseconds to close brought the problem plague practice 15, countdown of the space shuttle 14, to an abrupt halt 13, just seconds 12, before a vital 11, test firing of the main 10. engines. We have a go for main engine start seven. We have uh, we have we have a cutoff. We have cutoff of the uh, of the start sequence. NASA had hoped today's test firing would clear the way for the rebuilt shuttles return to space. But the latest problem is another blow to America's space program. It means another delay in the shuttle's launch date. It might cause a little extra delay in, the, in when we actually launch, but even that's not sure at this point. Uh, we really have to find out, out what went wrong and then fix it. Fixing the problem may not be easy. Engineers know what went wrong, but not why. Their options are to replace the entire valve or rewrite the launch guidelines, telling the shuttle's computer to ignore the sluggish valve. Both options mean more headaches and delays for NASA. There have been so many changes in technical procedures and hardware and personnel that NASA is basically having to learn all over again how to fly the shuttle. And the astronauts who will fly the next shuttle are asking for patience, telling workers not to become disillusioned. For months, crew members have been saying there will be disappointments and delays as America tries to return to space. This is real. This isn't Disneyland. This isn't fantasy t science fiction TV on Saturday afternoon. Uh, this is hard to do. NASA officials hope to schedule another test firing on Sunday, but concede the delay could be much longer, further clouding America's resumption of space flight. Bruce Hall, CBS News at the Kennedy Space Center. With Tom Brokaw. Good evening. It is hard to overstate America's investment in the space shuttle program in dollars, in pride, in this country's future in space. And tonight, the shuttle program is in trouble once again. NASA has been hoping to launch the discovery in early September, but as NBC's Dan Molina reports now, a critical test firing failed today. Things uh, have been going quite smoothly. Through the night, the shuttle seemed as ready as it could ever be for its main engine test firing. Among the members of the launch team, there was a sense of relief. A fuel line going into the spacecraft had leaked a few days earlier, but that didn't show up again. Dawn came, the countdown pressed ahead with no problems until the final seconds. Ten, we have a go for main engine start. Seven, we have, uh, we have, we have a cutoff. We have cutoff of the, uh, of the start sequence. A valve in one of the three main engines had not closed properly, and the computer had stopped the test. NASA engineers appeared weary but determined. There's a certain amount of frustration because we thrive on doing things completely and getting them done. Things don't work as well, you know, it's just a challenge. For two and a half years, NASA's been struggling to make the shuttle as safe as humanly possible. Before Discovery was rolled out to the launch pad, all her systems were examined and re-examined, and there were those who came to feel that NASA was being overly cautious. Among them was a senator who once flew on Discovery, Jake Garn of Utah. It has taken too long because we've tried to dot every I and cross every T. When Discovery was triumphantly rolled out on the 4th of July, it seemed like the frustration was over. Astronaut Dave Hilmers. It's the mark of a great nation of its greatness, that it can rise again from adversity. Music to the ears of the military and the private companies waiting to launch satellites, and to a legion of scientists with long delayed projects for the shuttle. But soon after the rollout, these NASA engineers were trying to find a way to plug a fuel leak deep inside the shuttle itself. This leak, entirely separate from today's concerns, by itself could delay the launch several extra weeks. The immediate task is to try the main engine test firing again. The earliest that can happen is Sunday. Dan Molina, NBC.